16 Michigan residents are facing felony charges for falsely claiming to be presidential electors for former President Trump after he lost the 2020 election. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel announced all of that Tuesday. Each of the 16 alleged false electors have been charged with eight felony counts. Joining us now is Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. Madam Secretary, why did it take so long for these charges to manifest? All the material facts have been known for more than two years. Well, I think the attorney general's investigation was meticulous. It was fact-driven. And it was mindful of this moment that we're in, where things, particularly with regards to law enforcement around violations of election law pertaining to the 2020 election, have become overly politicized. So it was really important here that she proceed carefully, judiciously, and her investigators did so. And when they were ready to issue an indictment, I think there was also a question of what was the right move in this challenging political environment. And ultimately, it, it appears she decided that the, the most political thing for her to do would be to not proceed with charges when there was overwhelming evidence of guilt. And so she proceeded with charges, and I think the investigation is still ongoing and may also reveal additional violations in the future. From your vantage point, Madam Secretary, do you believe Michigan will be the only state to so charge its residents for submitting fraudulent electoral slates? Well, we were, not the, we were not the only state to be inundated with false electors trying to uh, falsely claim to the federal government that they were the duly elected electors from the state. We know Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and several other states were, were uh, part of this scheme as well. So I don't think we should be surprised. And then we know the attorney general of Arizona, Chris Mays, has already said she's investigating the incident in her state. We shouldn't be surprised if we see other indictments follow. But I presume that if they do, they will be similarly in accordance with the law and the facts of the case and will proceed accordingly to ensure that justice is served where it needs to be served. Do you believe this is or these cases and these sets of facts are better prosecuted at the state level or the federal level? Interestingly, it's kind of two parallel tracks because the violations that happened here in Michigan that pertain to Michigan law, uh, the victims of this crime were Michigan voters, the millions of Michigan voters who voted in Michigan's election and deserve to have their voices heard and their votes certified and their duly elected electors represent them. Uh, so noting that there's a role to play for the states in protecting their voters. But when you have what appears to be a nationally coordinated effort to defraud voters in many states, there needs to be a federal component as well. And so it's no surprise to me that we're seeing both proceed, but both must proceed if we're truly going to see consequences for the unprecedented effort to try to undermine the will of the voters in a legitimate presidential election. Madam Secretary, do you believe these charges will have a deterrent effect as we head toward 2024? I'm hopeful. Uh, they, they certainly should, because we want to send a clear message to anyone, anywhere, on any side of the aisle, thinking of trying to undermine election results simply because they disagree with them, that that is not what we do in America, that is not what the law allows. And when anyone tries to interfere with the voices and votes of eligible voters, we will be there to ensure justice is served. And that's what these indictments ultimately underscore and the message that they send to anyone thinking of future shenanigans in 2024 or beyond. You mentioned, Madam Secretary, that these charges are meant to protect those voters who were harmed by this maneuver. I wonder if you have a perspective on that some of those voters who were harmed may well have been Trump voters who legitimately supported the former president, but would not want to be associated with anything to defraud the actual ultimate result, meaning they could be unhappy with the result, but don't want to be defrauded by anyone. Yes, indeed, that is democracy. Sometimes we win elections, sometimes we lose elections, but we stand by the results and the will of the people. And it's been notable that so many Republican voters and Republican leaders in Michigan have, uh, at the time and in the weeks and months since, uh, disavowed a connection to this uh, plan or have in many ways criticized it, because it's not what Republican voters deserve either. We all deserve to live in a democracy where whoever wins, uh, that that is the will of the voters, and it is respected and supported by everyone, even if you disagree with the results. So I hope all voters can see this is an act of protection for every citizen in our state to make sure that no matter who they vote for or who they support, that the winner, the right and duly elected winner of an election is the one who we will legally be bound to support. I have seen, Madam Secretary, some defense of this false elector scheme in the sense that 
Well, there were legitimate questions being raised, and the submission of false electors can't be regarded as a crime if, in the minds of those who submitted them, they were uncertain of the actual outcome. Your reaction? Well, notably, the signing of the false slate occurred after the legal system had been exhausted in Michigan. There were dozens of cases filed, determined meritless and evidenceless, evidenceless and dismissed. Uh, there were legislative hearings that failed to produce any credible shred of evidence of any type of uh, wrongdoing or inaccuracy in our elections. There were also audits that occurred after the certification of the election that again reaffirmed the accuracy of the results. So in many ways, this was almost a last ditch effort of what was a multifaceted attempt to try to undermine and overturn a duly legitimate election. Uh, and that said, uh, many people knowingly went into that, mayors, co-chair of the Republican Party, entered into the basement of the Republican Party headquarters and signed these pieces of paper. And there's plenty of evidence, I think, to suggest that's already been made public, that they fully knew what they were doing, lying to the federal government uh, to falsely state they were electors of the state. And when that happens, there needs to be accountability to ensure that this isn't attempted again. Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, we thank you very much. Thanks for having me.